Today I am giving you the secrets to building in-season stamina so you don't cost your team the win in the third period and so you don't blow that shutout in the last 90 seconds of a game. Stamina. The secret to building in-season stamina is knowing which kind of stamina you need to do. Do you need to do the hard stamina or do you need to do the easy stamina? Let me explain. Let's start with the hard stamina and hit, let's get it over with. Eat the frog first. <laughs> Who needs to do hard stamina? If you are on the ice four times or less, you're gonna need to do the hard stamina. And if you're on the ice at least four times, then you'll just do one of these workouts a week. If you're on the ice three times or less, you're gonna have to do two of them. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna give you two different hard stamina workouts. Uh, and one is gonna be a little bit more goalie specific, more agility based, and it's perfect too if you work out at home, if you don't have access to any equipment, this is one that you can do for sure. The second one you're gonna do either on the bike or the elliptical. I really like the bikes that have arm action like the Airdynes, but if you don't have access to one of those, any bike is fine. I like the elliptical as well because it gets you into some hip extension. So the second hard stamina workout will be a little bit easier on your hips. The purpose of these first two workouts is to get to that anaerobic threshold. So working at the very peak of your aerobic system into your anaerobic system, learning to sort of tolerate the discomfort that comes with that fatigue and training your body to recover quickly in between those high intensity bouts. We're also going to get some local muscular endurance and it's going to be good practice or think of it as good practice for performing with explosiveness and power even under fatigue. For workout number one, we're gonna start with a nice dynamic warm up. So make sure you do that first, and then you're gonna jump into this quick circuit. use an agility ladder for the first uh, circuit and you can move along the agility ladder that that's would be the purpose of using it if you don't have an agility ladder you can just do it on the spot you can even just tape out a box or a square or whatever you have access to I'm gonna do it on the spot just to make it a little bit easier for the filming and the footage so you can see what's going on but you could definitely do this drill moving forward in the ladder when you get to the end just turn around and come back that's no problem we're gonna start with a quick step lateral hop but every third repetition we're gonna do a five second iso hold so we're gonna build some of that local muscular endurance so a quick step lateral hop is step step and then we do a big hop all the way back so we're gonna do three like that but then on the third one we're gonna static hold this nice low ready position so if I go step step back step step back step step back now i'm going to hold one two three four five and then right from this loaded position back into the ladder step step lateral hop so i'm not going to come out of this so i'm not going to be here and then kind of stand up and go i want to just initiate boom <sighs> Hold one, two, three, four, five, and initiate right away. You're gonna do that for 30 seconds. So at 15 seconds or wherever that closest interval is, you'll switch so that you're starting on the other side. Now, if you're like me, and you sometimes like to do crazy things with your stick when you're moving on the ice, you can definitely hold your stick. So as you come across, you can practice leading with your head and your hands and getting your stick moving with you because on the ice, I like to do this one a lot. <laughs> so it's just a little something that you can practice. If you dropping your glove hand, think about, you know, where, where should that glove hand be? Am I leading with my head and my hands? 
for the next drill you're going to do a wide shuffle so if you have your ladder you're going to leave an empty square open all the time as you step so from here i'm going to step here first now there's two squares and then come along behind we want to not have a bunch of up and down and not a bunch of teeter-totter so we're just stepping 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 and then i'm coming back it's a short distance i'm using partly to get the frame but also to get that change of direction so my pattern isn't really super consistent i'm constantly changing patterns again i'm thinking of staying low in my legs i'm trying to see the ladder from my periphery not looking down at my feet as i go along and if control of your stick is an issue this is another example where you can have your stick along with you so that you get to practice moving that stick with your body so that one is down and back for 20 seconds then we're going to finish with an alternate knee down vertical jump for 10 seconds so we're not going to smash our knee down against the ground every time that's not the purpose of it but we are going to jump come down lightly tap or get so our knee just brushes the ground alternating like that so i'm just trying to get that rhythm get a good powerful push out of the bottom stay nice and stable in my torso i'm going to do that for 10 seconds i've also put that at the end remember we, we talked about at the start one of the purposes is to help you be explosive move with precision even when you're fatigued so in this one really you know make sure you're keeping your good alignment you're keeping your good strong torso that it isn't getting sloppy as you fatigue really focus on your task and being crisp and precise with those movements so exercise one quick step lateral hop with a five second iso hold every third repetition you're doing that for 30 seconds but remember you got to switch sides at 15 seconds then you go into the wide lateral shuffle down and back for 20 seconds staying low in your legs then we go to alternate knee down vertical jump for 10 seconds then so that's a minute of total work and you move from one to the next boom 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 you don't kind of dilly dally you know i gotta adjust my shoes in between it's just boom 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 60 seconds of work then you get two minutes of rest and you're going to repeat that cycle eight crushing times now if you have patellofemoral knee pain jumper's knee something like that this last exercise the alternate jump isn't going to be right for you so if that's you you can drop a comment below i'll try to give you an alternative but make sure if you do have knee pain that isn't getting better you're getting that checked out by your physio already hard stamina number two is a machine-based workout so yeah i like either like an airdyne bike like this one or i like the elliptical because again it, it it lets you get a bit of hip extension the airdyne is good because it takes the strain off your groins you're not adding a whole bunch more load to your groins it isn't functional but again this is an in-season training program not off season so we do want to kind of reduce the strain on your adductors especially if you're sort of prone to injury or you're feeling kind of sore tight in that area then this is a great option for you compared to that little bit more kind of goalie specific agility based workout so you will start this workout with just a three minute nice easy warm up we're loving life everything's good but then you are going to smash yourself hard how hard this is what your face should look like that hard <laughs> so you're gonna go as hard as you can which means as hard as you can for 20 seconds then for 10 seconds you're gonna just go pretty much as slow as you can love life try not to die think happy thoughts 
collect yourself for the next 20 seconds where you will smash it. So 20 seconds as hard as you can go, followed by 10 seconds. Easy, 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 easy. You're gonna do that eight times. Then you're gonna rest for three minutes. You can get off the bike, walk around, or just go, you know, this easy for three minutes. Then you're gonna go, same thing, 20 seconds full out, 10 seconds easy for six repetitions, take two minutes rest. Then you're gonna go 20 seconds full out, 10 seconds easy, four times, you're done. You might wanna put a garbage pail right here. Now, if you finish this workout and you're like, that wasn't so bad actually, but you know what, I'm pretty super fit, so it wasn't that hard for me, you're fooling yourself. <laughs> so there's, because, you're never so fit that this is easy. You're never so fit that, you know, you can full out sprint a mile. Usain Bolt, when he finishes a 400 meter race or an 800 meter race, he's not so fit that he's like, oh, well, that was easy for me. You know, he's, you know, he's the best in the world. It just means he goes faster, but he still, it still hurts just as bad. So if you finish a workout like this and you're like, oh yeah, that wasn't too bad you didn't push yourself to that highest level. And sometimes too, sometimes your muscular fatigue will sort of prevent you from getting there, but you need to push hard. If you're not, if you're not feeling like, yeah, like I might throw up right now, then you, you kinda didn't do it right. But I hope you don't throw up because that's not very nice, but put a garbage pail there just in case. What I've seen in my experience is that too many goalies ignore their in-season stamina training because number one, they think they're too busy and oh, I don't have an hour to do this or that, which it, as you can see, these are pretty short workouts. They don't take an hour or they worry, well, I don't want to do stamina training because then I'll be tired on the ice. And maybe you think that too. Drop a comment below actually. Let me know if you do in-season stamina training. And if you don't, why don't you do in-season stamina training. Like I said at the start of the video, the secret to doing in-season stamina training so that it helps you on the ice, not wears you out and makes you tired on the ice, which is your number one concern, is knowing the what type of stamina you need to do. So are you one of the people that needs to do hard stamina or are you one of the people that needs to do easy stamina. You're all like, please let me be the one that does easy stamina. The good news is if you are on the ice more than four times a week and you work hard in practice, like you're giving her, then you get to do easy stamina. Now, if you're just dogging it on the ice and you're kind of lazy, this might not apply to you. But if you're, well, let's say you're working hard, you get to do the easy stamina. Yay! What you're going to do is a 30 to 45 minute category two workout. This can be on the bike, the elliptical. It could even be a light jog if you are okay with jogging and running. If you are not a runner, I've worked with lots of hockey players, goalies and skaters who just like your hips were designed to skate, not to run, then don't run. But if you're okay with it, that, that's totally fine to do. Now, what is a category two workout? A category two workout is a workout where your heart rate stays between 60 and 70% of your max heart rate. So there are some predictive equations, ways you can you know calculate your max heart rate. There is a lot of just genetic variability and it, it doesn't even mean if you have a higher max heart rate or a lower max heart rate or a, a lower resting heart rate, it doesn't mean you're more fit or less fit necessarily. Necessarily. It just means that's sort of where where you are because not a lot of us know our true max heart rate Even if you wear a device that kind of tells you your max heart rate They've probably used a predictive equation and it could it may or may not be very accurate unless you've actually done a true VO2 max test like where you wear the snorkel and you go until you die and you fall right off the treadmill Then you know what your max heart rate is if you haven't done one of those you're you're making a sort of an educated guess. One thing we use is a rating of perceived exertion. So on a scale of one to 10, you would be somewhere in the four to five out of 10 range. So 
you are exercising, you're breathing a little bit harder than normal, you could still carry on a conversation, and you would feel like, oh, like I could do that, I could easily do this for an hour, you know, I could kind of go all day at this pace. That's what you're looking for. The purpose of this workout is to sort of upgrade your infrastructure. So increase capillary density so that oxygenated blood can get deeper into your muscle, can perfuse your muscle better to deliver oxygen to your working muscles because that's what it needs to, to do work and to help remove those waste products so that when you, we talked about in the first, in the hard stamina, we want to go hard, but we need to be able to recover quickly so we can go hard again. So this helps sort of build that infrastructure. It also helps increase what's called, what little organelles are called mitochondria, and they're known as the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> and it increases their density in the muscles as well. So we have more powerhouses, you know, helping us do more work. Also, it helps our body utilize um, fat as an energy substrate. Fat, we get a lot more calories from fat than we do from carbohydrates or from protein. So if we can get our body a little bit better at using fat as an energy substrate when we're in the aerobic training zone, that helps us sort of maintain our energy throughout the full event. So when you're doing it, you kind of feel silly at the gym and don't let, you know, your coach might walk in and be like, oh, don't work too hard there, you know, and think you're lazy. The hardest part of these workouts really is going easy enough. You know, this is one where, yeah, you could have, well, this one doesn't have a magazine rack, but you could have a magazine on the rack or, you know, watch your favorite show or listen to a podcast. It should feel easy. If it's ever feeling hard or like, oh, I'm getting tired or, oh, my legs are starting to burn. You need to slow down. And so that's where, you know, if you have like a heart rate monitor, Apple watch, whatever, it's kind of nice because it reminds you, hey, you need to slow down. You need to go a little bit easier on this one. Um, so that's it. You just hop on 30 to 45 minutes, steady state, nice and easy, should feel good afterwards. If you absolutely love the Airdyne bike, I have a little love-hate relationship with my Airdyne bike. <laughs> or you really like those CrossFit style, high intensity interval training workouts or HIIT workouts, then you probably wanna check out this video here uh, as I give you a, a, a really nice goalie specific stamina workout. It's gonna crush your legs, but it's gonna give you legs for days when you're on the ice. So check out that video. Let me know if you have any questions about this workout or about any in season goalie training just drop them in the comments below i answer each and every one of them i love chatting with you guys if you want more quick goalie specific workouts that you can do at home without taking up too much time then you should definitely check out the playlist it's called 10 secret habits of pro goalies there's mobility workouts strength workouts stamina workouts speed workouts Pretty much everything you need is in there to get started. So this wraps up video three of the five part in season goalie specific training videos that I'm making. In part one, I gave you a complete flexibility routine for in season. Video two, I gave you a strength workout for in season. Today is a stamina workout. If enough of you like this video in the next seven seconds i'll come back next week with a in-season speed workout for you ready set go you know what i'll do the video anyway but thanks for the likes i appreciate it if you didn't like already make sure you hit the like button make sure you subscribe i will definitely be back next week same bad time same bad channel see ya